Hi, I'm Agent Ford. Do you think you can help me solve another true crime mystery? On February 19th, 2008, Nine-year-old Shannon Louise Matthews was reported missing from her house in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, England, after not returning from school. Her search was a major missing persons police operation with 10% of the West Yorkshire's forces operational strength involved. The child, however, was found alive and well, 24 days after, in her mother's boyfriend's uncle's house. And when the truth behind her disappearance unraveled, investigators couldn't believe what they were hearing. At 6.48 p.m. on February 19, 2008, a frightened Karen Matthews called the police to report her daughter Shannon missing after she had not returned home from school. The kid was only nine years old and she was last seen earlier in that day at 3.10 p.m. outside her school, the Westmore Junior School in the district of Dewsbury Moor. There was an almost four hour long gap in which no one had seen little Shannon. Where was she? Led by Detective Superintendent Andy Brennan, the West Yorkshire Police started a massive search. More than 250 officers 16 specialist victim recovery dogs, and 60 detectives were questioning 1,500 motorists and searching almost 3,000 houses. With about 10% of the West Yorkshire's forces operational strength at work, the search for Shannon Matthews soon became the most considerable police investigation in West Yorkshire in the last 30 years. Still, Shannon seemed to have vanished into thin air. People were scared. Shannon's disappearance resembled the well-known case of Madeline McCann, the three-year-old English girl who had been missing only a few months prior while on a trip to Portugal with her parents. There was, however, a significant difference between the two cases, publicly. The girls were both victims, both English, both scarred kids, and their stories were both newsworthy. Still, a chilling contrast was drawn between publicly given to the disappearance of Madeline and the much lower level of publicity for Shannon's. The newspaper, the Brisbane Times, remarked that the two scarred mothers of the victims represented two sides of the social class coin in Britain. The Guardian and Independent were on the same page, writing that Kate and Jerry McCann were a couple of nice middle-class doctors on holiday in an upmarket resort. Karen Matthews, is not as elegant, nor as eloquent. And turning on any newscast or opening any newspaper, it looked like every news in the search for Shannon appeared less newsworthy than the minor developments in the search for Madeline. On March 14, 2008, finally, the police's hard work paid off and Shannon was found. She had been missing for 24 days and all along, she was at her mother's boyfriend's uncle's house, secreted in the base of a divan bed. It was a shock. Why was she there? What happened to her? It turned out that the criminal minds behind her mysterious abduction were the child's mother and her boyfriend's uncle, Michael Donovan. The motive? Generate money from the publicity and gain the reward money for the finding. Donovan was supposed to release Shannon at Dewsbury Market, then discover her a few moments later and bring her to the police station to claim the reward money, which would be split between the two. What kind of mother could ever do that to her child? After the police intervention, young and visibly scarred Shannon was placed under police protection and cared for by the local social services department. Michael Donovan was arrested at the scene, charged with abduction, false imprisonment, and committing acts intended to pervert the course of justice. In contrast, his nephew and Karen's boyfriend, Craig Meehan, was arrested a few days later on suspicion of possessing indecent images of children after police had examined computers in the home he shared with Karen. 
Amanda Hyatt, Craig Meehan's sister, was arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender. And their mother, Alice Meehan, sister of Michael Donovan, was arrested on suspicion of attempting to pervert the course of justice. They both were later released without charge, although Hyatt was jailed the following year in another benefit fraud conviction. Karen Matthews was arrested on April 6th on suspicion of attempting to pervert the course of justice. She was charged with child neglect, perverting the course of justice, abduction, and false imprisonment. Since Shannon's finding, it was an escalation of shocking discoveries for the investigators. They were simply speechless. Not only was this mother using her daughter to earn money, but the kid also suffered a lot. A forensic toxicological test on Shannon's hair indicated she had been given to Mazepam for up to 20 months before her disappearance. As the Daily Telegraph reported, Shannon was drugged and restrained with a strap tied to a roof beam after her mother hatched a plan to make money from her faked abduction. During the trial, which begun on November 2008, Karen and Donovan blamed one another, all while the prosecution revealed that Shannon had been suffering from nightmares after the event and needed regular psychotherapy counseling. Donovan claimed that Karen Matthews had asked him to look after her daughter for that period and make money as a reward. She threatened me. She was very violent, he stated. On the other hand, the woman sobbed throughout her statement and denied having anything to do with her daughter's disappearance. She claimed that it was her boyfriend who had forced her to take the blame for what had happened. She agreed because she was scared of him. Nonetheless, both Karen Matthews and Michael Donovan were found guilty of abduction, false imprisonment, and perverting the course of justice. They were sentenced to eight years in prison. On a different and unrelated trial, Craig Meehan was convicted of 11 counts of possessing child pornography, relating to 49 images of levels 1, 2, 3, and 4 found on his computer. Shannon's case had a massive echo in the media, with numerous documentaries and programs dedicated. On the night of the trial verdict, a BBC special was broadcast titled Shannon the mother of all lies. In the trial's aftermath, revelations about the life that Shannon Matthews and her siblings had endured with their mother Karen Matthews were widely highlighted and politicized by the media, which described their family as dysfunctional. Karen was finally getting the publicity she had been longing for so hard, except it was all horrible publicity. After the nightmare finally came to an end, little Shannon was given a new identity and placed with a foster family. We hope she one day will be able to recover completely from what she had been put through. No one should ever suffer like that, especially not an innocent child and definitely not at the hands of her own mother. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments below. As always, I look forward to reading your interesting theories. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow investigators. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a case. With that being said, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the next crime scene.